Transfections using lipofectamine is a way to introduce DNA into human cells. The lipofectamine surrounds the DNA, creating this liposome, and the P3000 makes it such that the liposome does not end up for degradation, and instead, the DNA gets released into the cell, which makes its way to the nucleus, and then it allows us to express proteins off that inserted DNA. So here's Spencer. This is how we get our biosafety cabinet prepped. Open that sash, make sure it gets up to sash height. If it is too high or too low, we don't have proper airflow. And then hit the blower button. The readout will say, please wait. And at that point, we wait. Working with human cells, one thing is very important. Uh, cleanliness is, is key to everything. So everything that goes into this uh, hood gets sprayed down. So here is uh, Spencer wiping down or spraying down the racks with ethanol. He's spraying down any bottle that goes in there. And then you do a quick spray of your hands as well. And then enter in just being mindful of airflow because once again, it's all about keeping a clean environment. For each transfection, you're going to need two tubes. Uh, Spencer has just kind of labeled each tube as uh, R and Y, and we'll talk a little bit later about why he chooses those two labels. And then into each tube, he places the reagent. So this is a OMEM, it's an optimized medium. It's kind of think of it, I guess, as SOC for human cells. And each tube gets 50 microliters of OMEM. And then into the yellow tube, you add the DNA and the P3000 reagent. Into the uh, R tube, he places the lipofectamine, right? And we call them uh, Y and R because the two tubes or the two reagents that he uses have a red cap and a yellow cap. Now, of course, depending on the manufacturer that you buy these from, the cap colors may change, but this is sort of the thing that Spencer has done. Now, the other thing you have to be aware of is that when you have multiple reagents, or sorry, multiple transfections, you can't just label everything YR, YR. You know, you'll have to be a little bit more careful. But here he's just adding all the reagents into the tubes, add the appropriate amount of DNA, one microgram in our case, right? And so you will have that pre-calculated according to your DNA concentration. And then just a little tap. You want to make sure everything settles on the bottom. And then we wait three to five minutes. And at this point now, the lipofectamine I'm sorry, the reagent is uh, basically just getting active. And then we combine everything. And each tube has just a little bit more than 50 microliters. So then he just takes uh, a pipette at 60 microliters and then now combine the two ingredients and then tap everything down gently. And then now we wait 10 minutes. At this time now, Spencer is going to check his cells. And actually, this was done before in full disclosure because it's uh, much more efficient that way, but we put our cells under a microscope and we wanna look for confluency. How covered is the bottom? And we'd like something like 75 to 90%, something like this, which is kind of a little bit high actually, as opposed to um, something like this, where we don't quite have full coverage, right? And so in this case, we don't have enough cells to do the proper transfection. So here's Spencer looking, making sure, are these cells ready? Yeah, he feels they're good to go. So we take this over to our biosafety cabinet. And again, generally we would do this before and just have the cells ready in the cabinet. But in this case, he did it after. Spray everything down like before and then place into the biosafety cabinet, ready to add our DNA. Don't forget to spray your hands, okay? Every time you leave and handle things, you wanna make sure that you spray your hands when you come back in. And so now he's ready to go and it's now been 15 minutes. And now at this point, we simply just add the DNA and you'll see how simple it is. We literally just pipette the DNA into the wells, like so. Small drips, don't just all go gush, right? So just kind of drip it all over the place. Your DNA is gonna be surrounded in these little liposomes. They're gonna settle in there, make their way into the cells as best we can. Uh, and then that's it. That, this is about as simple as a transfection gets. A little bit of a swirl if you want to. It's not necessary, but Sometimes we do it. Now we take it back to the incubator. I'm not really sure why Spencer's carrying the plate so funny, but this is a CO2 incubator. Keeps things nice and warm. Keeps the CO2 concentration perfect. We place it in there, uh, double glass, right? To make sure that the seal is right and the carbon dioxide stays. And then we should see protein expression in 24 to 48 hours. This is what cells look like pre-transfection or without any GFP. And then if everything goes well, we should see our cells expressing the GFP. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, we'll talk about some of the differences between transfection and transformation. But uh, 
again, relatively simple way to express proteins in human cells.